Hi, I'm Brian Lord, Senior Vice President of Premier Speakers Bureau. I'm happy to have on Janet Evans, Olympic gold medalist and one of the most uh, decorated swimmers in American history. Uh, Janet, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Brian. Now, a lot of companies, a lot of corporate America right now, after some very difficult years, are making comebacks and really striving toward that. And you're uh, coming back, uh, have a pretty amazing comeback of your own that you're in the process of right now. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that comeback and what you feel the keys are to making a successful comeback? Sure. Yeah, I was a swimmer and uh, swam in the 88, 92, and 96 Olympics, retired um, after the Atlanta 1996 Games when I was 24. Um, achieved great success at my Olympic level, and, and after those Games, I decided I wanted to do all the things a 24-year-old wants to do and travel the world and live in different cities and uh, get married and, and, and start a family, which I did. Um, a couple of years ago, um, I kind of had this... Um, you know, swimming's in my soul. And I, I said to my husband, I, I want to swim again. I want to see what my body can do. I want to kind of, you know, put my head at the pillow, on the pillow at the end of the day and feel like I've done, you know, a little for myself as well. And uh, so I, I jumped back in the pool and started swimming again, wondering what my, at the time, 38-year-old body would uh, <laughs> would do. And um, got in really great shape fairly quickly and um, have fit, been very blessed to have a very supportive family. And um, I qualified for the Olympic trials um, a few weeks ago, so I'll be swimming in June at the U.S. Olympic trials, uh, trying to head to London uh, at the end of the summer. Wow, wow. Now, how many, how many kids do you have? I have two children. I have a five-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old um, that keep me very busy. <laughs> um, but for some reason, you know, my husband's really helped me with all of this, and it's for some reason we've been able to make it work. I, I swim every morning from 5.30 to um, 8.30. And then I get home in time to get my little one, my oldest, off to off to school. And then uh, I swim again every afternoon for a couple of hours. And my parents really help me out. And um, so it's just been, you know, I've I've been taking care of myself and eating better. And my family's been eating better. It's become this whole group thing that we're trying to all accomplish together. So it's been amazing and very um, stable with a, you know, with a family here for me all the time. It's been uh, it's been a very fun and and, and interesting experience. Well, now that's a lot of, that's an issue that a lot of people come up to you. How do you, how do you be a mom and a parent and a spouse and, and everything yeah. and still be at the top of your profession, especially yours being the top of your profession in the world? Yeah, you know, I mean, and for me, for my profession, it's very physical, right? So when I come home, um, I'm tired, like mm -hmm. everyone's tired, but I'm like, my muscles hurt. And, you know <laughs> what I mean? So. Um, but also, I'm very blessed in that I swim every morning, I swim every afternoon, so I do have time at home with my children in the day. So for me, it feels a little bit like a part-time job. So mm -hmm. um, it's really been fulfilling for me because I live more in the moment. I enjoy every moment with my kids. You know, I know every afternoon I have to get back in that pool for a couple of hours. So um, I just, my time has become more quality time with them. Mm -hmm. But on a personal level, I also feel like I am doing something for myself. I feel healthier. I feel better. I feel, um, you know, I get my own space and my own time to clear my head when I'm swimming up and down that pool. And, you know, I think it's something a lot of moms um, go through and experience. And um, I think it takes courage to say, you know what, I want to do it for myself, even if periodically it could sound, you know, a little bit selfish. But um, for me, it's been not selfish because I feel like it's just really helped my whole perspective on everything. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things you talk about is is turning a, uh, a dream into a goal. So what's the difference between the two and, and what do you feel are the steps to to reach that success? Well, you know, I think there's always things that we, we dream about, you know, that we want to do. Um, and for me, I always wanted to swim again. I left the Atlanta Olympics uh, without the success I, I had hoped for. I had trained long and hard for those games and, and didn't swim as well as I wanted to. And in the back of my mind, on the back burner, was always this thought like, gosh, I'd love to, to try this again with the wisdom I've gained and, and with a different mental attitude. But I had all these other things going on in my life. But it was always a dream for me. Um, but the, the idea of turning it into reality initially took a lot of courage. I mean, it took courage for me to, to tell my husband that this is what I wanted to do and that this is something that would, you know, be a few sacrifices for our family and I'd be pretty tired by 8 o'clock at night and want to go to bed at the same time as the kids. Um, <laughs> You know, stuff like that, but it also took courage um, just to make that first step. You know, they always say that's the hardest part is taking the first step. Um, but after I took that first step, there were also challenges. You know, there's negativity. There are always people telling us we can't do things mm -hmm. because, just because, because people like to do that. And for me, I was always, in my earlier career, I was always too little or young or inexperienced. Now I'm too old and too busy, <laughs> you know. So um, I think it 
turning that you know dream into a goal and a reality just takes um, determination. There's going to be speed bumps along the way. There are going to be setbacks. Um, you kind of have to uh, rely on others. I've learned to allow other people to help me instead of trying to do everything myself. Um, I've allowed people to come in and give me support. Um, so for me, it's been besides the dream of, of living you know, or of, of swimming in the Olympics, it's been a, a very fulfilling um, thing outside of that as well. So I think the first step is courage and then it's you know determination and, and not listening to other people when they tell you you can't do it and, and realizing there's going to be hard times. But in the end of the day, it's um, you know taking that first step is the best thing you can do because it leads to amazing places. Now, what are the tools and takeaways? What do people walk away with after hearing you speak? Well, you know, I think I, I think there's inspiration, of course. I mean, I think people are always inspired by athletes um, and our stories because you know who doesn't love who doesn't love a good a good sports story, right? <laughs> you know, a comeback sure. kid or someone that isn't supposed to do well. So, you know, I think um, you know first and foremost is inspiring, but also that um, I, I think it's it's. Uh, that it's all challenging. You know, sometimes athletes, you know, we stand up and we speak and it, we make it all seem so easy. Or maybe we don't make it seem easy, but when we're on the playing field, mm -hmm. we make it seem easy. But I think that athletes experience um, many similar things that, that everyone else does in the business world. I mean, our sport is our job and we have the same setbacks and the same issues and the same motivation issues and the same mental issues. Mm -hmm. We just add a few like shoulder problems <laughs> and <laughs> muscles along the way. But, you know, I think the takeaway is that you know, setting goals and working hard and being determined and overcoming obstacles, you know, is uh, transcends sport and, and moves on to everyone else's life. So I think we all can kind of relate to the to the journeys that we are all on. One of the things we really focus on here at Premier is making an event planner's life easier and making them look good. How do you how do you do that when you speak? Um, well, well, with the event planners, I love my event <laughs> I love my event planners. So um, you know, I'm always happy to to do calls beforehand, mm -hmm. come in early. I just need some pool time. <laughs> I need to find a swimming pool wherever I am, um, uh, which usually isn't very hard. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, I think that, you know, in terms of speaking, I always I feel very blessed for my job. You know, I appreciate um, the opportunity to inspire others. I think as an Olympic champion, um, that comes with the territory. You know, once you win one of those Olympic gold medals, I feel it's my responsibility to inspire others. So I'm always very, I feel very honored to um, be asked to speak in an event. So I'm, um, Usually pretty easy going. <laughs> I, I, I make it easy. I try. <laughs> Great. Now, uh, for those watching, if you want to learn more about Janet, uh, you can follow the link below the screen here uh, to uh, see video, read bio, speech topics, that sort of thing, and get a lot of great information about Janet. And then also make sure to subscribe uh, to this channel to, uh, to watch these interviews and, uh, about Janet and other great speakers. So, Janet, thanks so much for coming on and doing this. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. Yeah, of course. Thanks.